We are the Department of Anthropology at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. In 1974, the department established the first MA program in applied anthropology in the United States. It developed an MA track in public archaeology, uh, also a first in the country. Skip ahead 10 years to 1984, the PhD program uh, was established in applied anthropology, and this is a first in the field of anthropology. Our faculty members conduct community and lab-based basic and applied research uh, to address and find solutions for global human problems. And we work in health and illness, sustainable resource management and economic development, community identity and heritage, the social constructions of race, ethnicity and gender, and past human systems and behavior, including Antoinette Jackson's uh, efforts to engage students in heritage research, Lorena Madrigal, who is a biological anthropologist, is doing some very interesting research on the genetic ancestry of an Indo-Costa Rican community. Tom Placan, who is our associate chair, um, has been doing research as part of the Crystal River Early Archaeological Project. Nancy White is our senior archaeologist. She has been doing field work and running field schools uh, on the prehistoric and early historic archaeology in Northwest Florida. Robert Tycott, a senior archaeologist, has been doing ancient diet reconstructions at various locations around the world. Becky Zarger, an environmental anthropologist, is doing some very interesting research on the impacts of climate change. So Elizabeth Bird is uh, working on a community collaboration. Uh, this is known as the Asaba Project. We're looking at the history and the memory of a massacre that happened in the Civil War, in the Nigerian Civil War um, in 1967. The notion of working with the community, uh, not on the community, but working with the community actively to create this, uh, this new memory is, I think, a very important part of, of what we're doing. Kevin Yelvington is doing an ongoing study of wine tourism in Southern California which is supported by the National Science Foundation. We're looking at wine production. Uh, we're looking at the promotion of the place as a touristic venue, as a site of tourism. I'm looking at, we're looking at labor. These are undocumented workers who work in very harsh conditions. We know, need to know about these conditions in order to make the changes that are needed and that are only right. So several of our faculty work on issues relating to undocumented migrants, and in particular, Heidi Castaneda and Angela Stisi have been doing uh, research on a variety of issues and challenges that these folks are presented with. The Globalization and Community Health Field School is uh, directed by Nancy Romero Daza and myself. This is an intensive summer program done in rural Costa Rica. In addition to providing tools for research, we also want our students to learn about the culture of the communities with whom we work. And um, so part of the, of the program is the homestay component. That part uh, included well, perhaps the most rewarding uh, segment of the program, which was the homestay, living with the local family, and learning so much more through experience than you really could any other way. Erin Kimmerly directs the Forensic Anthropology Lab at USF. Kimmerly and USF anthropologist Antoinette Jackson and Christian Wells, along with several of their students, have been investigating the Dozier School for Boys after allegations of abuse that occurred decades ago recently surfaced. That project has involved uh, surveying to look for unmarked burials, the excavation of 55 unmarked burials, and the entire process for identifying the 55 individuals. It's just a great way for them to get hands-on experience and everything that they're learning you know, can be applied in this one sort of case study. One of the very important things that distinguishes anthropology from, from other biological sciences is that we take a broader, more integrated approach to humans, human lives and how the world gets under the skin of the person and impacts what their, their well-being. Some of my previous work has been done in Kenya to see how mothers and infants shared immune systems. Um, and now I'd like to do that work in the U.S. 
and collect information here in Tampa, um, I might be able to do comparison. So I can see how these populations actually do differ. And if they have any impact on infant outcomes, we might be able to change how we look at infant feeding and how we take care of infants early in life. Neuroanthropology is a new field that I've helped develop uh, over the past eight years or so. And what it does is integrate anthropology with neuroscience. As I saw students um, going to Google to find ideas and to find information for papers. And I realized that unless anthropology was on the web in an active way, then we wouldn't be present um, in these students' lives. And so uh, Greg Downey and I founded Neuroanthropology as an independent blog in 2007. And in 2010, it moved to become part of the Public Library of Science. We, uh, in a typical year, reach 200 uh, countries and territories. And uh, between the two blogs, uh, recently have been having about uh, 800,000 visits a year. Robbie Baer works with undergraduate and graduate students, and they're doing research with the Burmese refugee community in Tampa. And these are folks who are also participating in the community garden. I became interested in doing what I could to involve my students from anthropology classes in the work of the garden. We got to do data collection uh, through uh, focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews. Just understanding how all this sort of nondescript leafy green surroundings translates into cultural importance for these people is amazing. To learn how what might look like lettuce or broccoli to us is actually something so much more integral and part of their history and their culture. Our department focuses on applied anthropology and this is really a great example of how we can use our knowledge of cultural differences to really make an impact, to really make a difference. 